I'm Brie, a professional chef and hunter. I left my job as a culinary chef instructor to follow my passion for the outdoors. Now I'm using my talent in the kitchen to develop the most amazing wild game recipes. Join me as I travel across America to bring the wilderness to table. Quail is the star today and we're starting it off by highlighting those light and delicate flavors. We're doing a whipped ricotta salad with baby arugula and a lemon vinaigrette and topping it all off with fresh heirloom tomatoes and toasted pine nuts. And moving along to the entree, since quail are so light and delicious, we're going to serve light and delicious potato gnocchi in a brown butter sauce with sage and peas. And for dessert, we're having a spiced affogato. This quail was harvested in the sorghum fields of Georgia on a really hot day. All I remember is getting my burrs and running them straight to the cooler. Let me show you how to make my lemon vinaigrette. It's super easy. We're going to let the blender do all the work. So let's get started. We're going to remove the lid. We're going to start with our Dijon mustard. It goes right in there. We're going to do our shallots into the bowl. It's super easy. Everything just goes in. The blender's going to do all the work for you so you don't have to do anything. I got my garlic, chopped garlic. You can even add the whole cloves in there and let the blender do that work. I'm going to season it with salt and pepper as well. Always, always season. Then to sweeten it up a bit because we always want that contrast between savory and sweet, we're going to add about a tablespoon of honey right into our jar. Add a little bit more. Perfect. Then we're going to add a fresh squeezed lemon juice right into there. Then for an added lemon kick, I'm going to zest about a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half of fresh lemon zest. The essential oils in the um, zest of the lemon are just going to brighten up our vinaigrette and it's going to give it that nice bright citrus lemon flavor that we all love. Okay, we got that. Then I'm going to remove the top part of my lid so that I can pour in my olive oil. Now I'm just going to get the blender going and I'm going to drizzle in my olive oil while it's running. And there you go. Our vinaigrette is all done. Now I'm going to get a jar and show you how beautiful this vinaigrette is. It's creamy and delicious and citrusy. Look at this. This is why it's a pantry staple. And it's going to top my arugula salad as well. Now that our lemon vinaigrette is finished, I'm going to go ahead and whip our ricotta and then we're going to finish that off with the baby arugula and we're going to top it with this lemon vinaigrette. To make our whipped ricotta salad, we're going to start by whipping our ricotta. I have whole milk ricotta. I prefer whole milk over skim milk because it whips nicer than the skim milk does. But first, I'm going to actually season with salt and pepper because you always want to season every single layer. So we're going to season our ricotta. And then I'm going to drizzle in about two tablespoons of olive oil just for some added flavor. So now our ricotta is so nice and fluffy. It's like little clouds of cheese, which is exactly what we want. I'm just going to put my blender away over here. And then we're ready to assemble our salad. It's so easy. I'm going to place this right here. I'm going to grab our arugula and I'm going to dress it with our lemon vinaigrette that we've already made. Just going to give about a tablespoon and a half in the bowl. Then I'm going to toss it all together. 
And of course, I'm gonna season a little more salt, a little more pepper. We want every layer to taste delicious of this salad. Since it's so simple, they're simple ingredients. We want every flavor to shine. So a little story about this salad. When I was in Italy, I had this salad of whipped ricotta and I actually didn't know what was underneath my salad. And I was like, what is this cloud-like cheese? I've never had it. And I had to ask what it was because I ordered off the menu and just pointed and was like, I'll have that one. And sure enough, the waiter said it was ricotta and I was amazed. So this is my take on that fabulous salad I had actually in Capri, Italy. It was delicious. Now, I got my bowl. I am going to plate it just like I had in Italy and I'm gonna take a big scoop of my ricotta and I'm gonna place it in the middle. And because, you know, everything has to look pretty, I'm just gonna give it a little swoosh around there. Then I'm going to top it with my dressed arugula with our lemon vinaigrette, just like that. And then we're going to add heirloom cherry tomatoes. I love heirloom cherry tomatoes. I mean, look at these colors. You cannot beat them. They're so gorgeous. And the flavors are just intense tomato fruitiness. Oh, they're just divine. I love those. Then, of course, because we're making an Italian salad, I have Italian flat leaf parsley that I'm just gonna add on here. Then I'm gonna take some basil, and what I like to do with this salad, and is exactly how I learned it when I was in Italy, is they tear it instead of cutting it. So I'm just gonna tear and sprinkle my basil on my salad, and I'm going to top it with toasted pine nuts. Look at these, these little babies I can eat like as a snack all day long, but today they're gonna to go on top of my ricotta salad and they're gonna great, give us a great nutty texture that I love and that flavor, it's almost buttery-like. Because this salad looks so delicious, I cannot wait to try a bite. And I'm hoping it's just as wonderful as the one I had in Italy. Oh, this ricotta is pillowy and delightful and I'm gonna make sure to get a tomato in there as well. Mmm. So delicious. It's like I'm sitting at that little cafe in Capri all over again. I know y'all are really gonna love this salad. Wilderness to Table is brought to you by potato gnocchi with quail, we're first going to start by slow poaching our quail. I'm going to go ahead and get them right into my pan and then I'm going to top them with homemade chicken stock. I prefer using stock over water just because it's going to impart more flavor and anywhere I can add additional flavor I'm probably going to do it. So I'm just going to fill this till the quail breasts are just covered. It usually equals like four cups of chicken broth. Then I'm going to get my burner on and I'm gonna set it to medium heat. And once I start seeing bubbles come up, I'm gonna turn it down to medium low heat. So while that is going, I'm gonna show you how to make my potato gnocchi. I'm gonna grab my bowl. Everything is gonna be made in the bowl. I have two potatoes already mashed and cooked, and I've actually let them dry on a cookie sheet because I wanna make sure that there's no more excess water in these potatoes. So they're actually a lot drier than what you would normally eat, but they're great for this potato gnocchi dough. I'm gonna get that all in here. Then I have two cups of flour that I'm gonna to add to my potatoes, and I'm gonna crack one egg as a binder, holds everything together. This recipe is gonna make a lot of gnocchi, but what I like to do is go ahead and make all the dumplings at once, and then I will freeze them. They freeze perfectly. Put them on a cookie sheet, 
and then put them in the freezer and then put them in Ziploc bags and you're good to go. I'm just seasoning my dough with salt and pepper. Always, always season. I want to make sure those little dumplings are tasty. Now I'm just going to take a spatula, mix that egg in, and then I'm just going to fold it all together until my dough comes together. And if you can't do it with a spatula, don't be afraid to get in there with your hands. Sometimes that's what you need. So now our dough is starting to form beautifully. I'm just gonna, you're just squeezing it all together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up rolling out little logs of gnocchi to the size of the dumpling that we want. And then we're just gonna cut them in even little squares. And then we're gonna set them aside and then we're going to boil them in water. And they only take like two minutes to cook. And you know they're done when they rise to the top. So it's super easy to do. Removing the, the dough from the bowl so it's easier to work with. And now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna form everything. I just wanna knead everything together Get those gluten strands in that flour working. So it becomes a nice dough. See how everything is coming together? It takes a little muscle work, but you know, you get a little workout right before you enjoy this awesome meal. So can't beat that. Okay, so now I'm gonna shape it into a ball like this. Pat it down, and then I like to just squeeze Squeeze it in half with my, my fingers. I'm gonna do this, and now we're just gonna roll it out into a log. Let's do two. Let's cut that in half, just to make life a little bit easier. Help to get it started. We're gonna roll it out. You gotta probably squeeze, it's like squeeze and roll, squeeze and roll, squeeze and roll. But look at this. It's getting there, we're gonna squeeze it, and now we can roll it. So this is about the size of a log that you're looking for. So now I'm rolling and tucking my gnocchi dough. And it's getting to the size that I want. Just gonna press it, really make sure that it's all pressed in there nicely so that when it cooks it doesn't fall apart. Now this is about the size that we want for our gnocchi. Then I'm gonna use a bench scraper, an easy tool to cut your gnocchi and now I'm just going to cut them about the same size so they all cook evenly. So look, this is a perfect little potato gnocchi. So now I'm just gonna do, roll the rest of the dough into little logs and cut my little pillows and then they'll be ready to cook. Now, I'm almost done with my dough. We've got two more logs and then we're gonna cook it my quail are starting to look beautiful. My, my chicken broth is bubbling at the exact temperature that we want. We don't want to boil. We just want to slow poach. We want to slow poach our quail because high heat has a tendency to make wild game really tough. So whenever you're cooking wild game, especially birds, just go with that low and slow method and you are gonna be golden every time you cook it. And if you're worried about how, about overcooking your quail, and say you're at a family barbecue, and you know you're gonna be talking to people, but you don't wanna serve like tough quail, well, you know what? Put it in a brine. Put it in some salt, some water, and some flavorings like thyme and rosemary and lemon peel, and let it sit overnight. And then when you're at your party talking to your guests, you won't have to worry about overcooking your quail and making it tough because that brine, that brine is gonna save you. Just a little chef tip. There you go. I finished making all of my gnocchi and now my quail are done. I'm gonna get them on a plate so that they can cool, so that I can touch them. I want them cool enough to touch so I don't burn my hands. And then I'm going to shred the meat by hand um, so that they're gonna go into my sauce. I'm just gonna get these out of here. Look how beautifully poached they are, and they should be really tender and flavorful from that broth. There's my last one. Perfect. Now I'm gonna set these aside, and then I'm going to finish 
making my gnocchi. Now I'm gonna get my gnocchi into a bowl so that I can assemble the other ingredients for our sauce and prior to us cooking. Now a good thing, the gnocchi are still a little moist, so what I like to do is just take a small handful of flour and sprinkle it on and sprinkle a little in my bowl. I have a little extra. And then that way the flour will prevent them from sticking. You can also make sure that you get it in your hands. This is also a good tip. Put it in your hands and then when you toss the gnocchi, the gnocchi is taking the flour off your hands and now they're not gonna stick to each other. So we don't have one big giant gnocchi when we go to put them in the boiling water. So our quail are finally cool enough to touch and now I'm going to shred them by hand, but first I'm going to get our poaching liquid up to a boil. I'm gonna turn this on medium high heat. I'm using the same poaching liquid that I poached my quail in to cook my gnocchi. I like to impart as much flavor as I can and that has quail and broth goodness. So that's why I'm gonna use that to cook my gnocchi. You can, if you would like, to use water instead. Just be sure to salt your water when you're, just, when you're using water. So now I'm gonna show you how I shred my quail. It's really easy, they all come off the bone. You have that breastbone in the middle and we're just going to remove the meat and give it like a rustic shred, nothing fancy. We want good bite-sized pieces like this for our sauce. These are gonna get drenched in that brown butter sauce that we're gonna make and they're gonna taste fabulous with our gnocchi. These are really pretty birds. I can actually remember when my dog brought them back to me. There is nothing better than being on a hunt and seeing your dog bring back your quail that you just got. There's something so heartwarming and fun and I mean, it just really connects me to my meal and I'm so thankful for that. So now we got our quail done. I'm just gonna set this aside because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to place my quail meat into a bowl and set it aside because we're gonna use it later. Now our poaching liquid is nice and up to temp now I can start cooking my gnocchi. So I'm going to take a handful of gnocchi, about this amount, and drop them in the water. Be careful, don't drop really high or else you're gonna burn yourself. The fun thing about gnocchi is they're gonna tell you when they're done. Don't you love that? They're gonna float to the top. So when they float to the top, I know that they're perfectly cooked. So I'm just gonna, not gonna overcrowd my pan. I'm just gonna cook about maybe 10 gnocchi at a time. So I'm gonna cook these in batches. And I have a bowl all set for my gnocchi when they're all cooked. So now if you can see our gnocchi are starting to float, which is what we want. And that means they're telling us that they're done cooking. So all I'm gonna do is scoop them out, put them into my bowl, and then I'm gonna add another batch into my poaching liquid. Just like that. Get another handful. Okay, and we're gonna wait and now let those come and float. And then we have about one more batch of gnocchi to cook and we'll be finished. We have all the finished ingredients to compile our sauce now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with one stick of butter, get it into my pan. Set that aside, get our pan up on medium heat. I'm gonna let that melt and then I'm gonna let that brown, okay? So we want it to move around the pan and we want it to get all nutty and brown in flavor. So we're just gonna let that go. So essentially, brown butter is you're not browning all of the butter, you're browning the fat solids that are in the butter technically. So that's what's browning. And then the oil doesn't necessarily brown. So it's only really the fat solids in the butter that are browning. I don't wanna put anything into my butter while it's browning 
because I don't want the temperature of the butter to drop, because if it dropped, then it wouldn't brown. So that defeats the purpose. So we're gonna first get our butter just to where we want it, then we can start adding the peas and the quail and the gnocchi. You can start to see my butter starting to brown, those little fat solids getting all caramelized. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my peas right into there. Then I'm also gonna add some sage. I kinda want those sage leaves to fry in that brown butter. I'm gonna give that a stir. Oh my goodness, y'all, look! Look at that butter. I'm gonna just turn down the heat a little bit. I just want that sage to get coated and almost fry in that butter. Then I'm gonna add my quail. Right now, get my quail bits in there. Perfect. I'm gonna to toss that in the butter as well. Then I'm gonna add my gnocchi. Give that a good toss all together. And of course, we always have to season, and I'm even gonna season this layer. I'm gonna give it a good dosing of salt and pepper. Voila, a little bit more pepper. I'm gonna give that a stir. Toss that all together. Look at how beautiful, look, that sage in that butter smells heavenly. Oh my gosh, the flavor combination of butter and sage is just beautiful. And sage and quail go really well together, and sage and butter go well together. Look at that, it's finally ready to serve. So now, I'm gonna take my bowl. I can turn this off the heat now. And I'm gonna scoop in some of my beautiful gnocchi, quails, peas, sage, and that brown butter. Definitely wanna make sure I get as much brown butter as I can. Then, to top it off, because I love cheese so much, but it wouldn't be a true Italian dish if we didn't have cheese, right? So of course, I'm going to grate some fresh Parmesan right on top. Look at that. So delicious. And there you have it. My potato gnocchi with poached quail and brown butter sage sauce. And now, I get to try it. It's so delicious, the smell of the brown butter and this gnocchi is just like waiting for me to dig in. And I cannot wait to try the quail I've harvested myself. Mm. This takes me right back to my time in Italy when I had gnocchi for the very first time. It's so delicious, y'all. And my quail is so tender. You're gonna love making this recipe. You're really gonna enjoy this one, y'all. So we've completed our starter and our entree and we're on to dessert and I'm making a spiced espresso affogato. What's an affogato? It's an Italian dessert and it's heavenly. It's ice cream topped with espresso. But today, I'm not gonna serve boring plain espresso. We're gonna jazz it up. So I'm gonna start by getting my pan on the heat to medium high heat, and I'm gonna pour in about a cup of water right into my pan. Then I'm going to add instant espresso. I am using Italian, keeping with the theme today. Pour that right in there. Then I'm going to add a tablespoon of confectioner's sugar. 
I'm using confectioner sugar in this recipe because it's one, sugar, it's gonna sweeten up our espresso a bit, but confectioner sugar has cornstarch in it, so it's going to add a little bit of thickness to our sauce. Then I'm going to spice it up with spices. Right now, I'm gonna use cinnamon. Go right there. I love cinnamon. But let me tell you about this next spice. This next spice is highly underrated and is probably one of my favorite spices in the world. This is cardamom. I love cardamom. What I did for this is, this is a pro tip I'm gonna give you. You get whole cardamom seeds and you toast them and then you grind them and then you have powder and you use it to spice anything you want. But that toastiness that the, it gives the cardamom is just, to die for. Cardamom is, I tell you, the new it spice in my book. <laughs> I'm gonna put a dash in there. And then, because no dessert isn't complete without chocolate, I'm adding about four ounces of bittersweet chocolate to my espresso. Now, I'm just gonna let that sit. I'm gonna go to medium high heat. and I'm gonna whisk it all together, just like this. We don't want it to get too hot. I don't want that chocolate to burn. I just want it to melt all evenly in there. Perfect. Now, while that's all mingling together, I'm gonna make some whipped cream. We've got our heavy whipping cream, goes right into the jar. Then we're gonna add some confectioner sugar right in there and some vanilla extract right in, just like that. Then we're gonna take the charger, place it in there, put the lid on. Twist, give it that awesome charge to get our whipped cream going and wait for it. Yeah, now we're fully whipped. <laughs> then I'm just gonna give it a shake. And then I'm gonna set it aside. And look at this, this is a, such a quick dessert, y'all. So easy. I've got my serving cup right here that I'm gonna scoop some vanilla ice cream into. I did make this homemade but y'all can use store-bought, but I do recommend making homemade ice cream. Why? Because it's fun. I'm just gonna put maybe three, okay, maybe four scoops into my cup because this is dessert and I like ice cream and I like espresso. There, we've got our ice cream. Now, the fun part. We're gonna make it delicious. Our espresso granules have all melted and the spices are evenly dispersed. Now all I'm gonna do is pour it on top of our ice cream and it becomes like an espresso float. Look at that, oh my goodness. To finish it off, we're gonna put a little whipped cream right in there, just like that. And then for more chocolatey goodness, we're going to sprinkle cocoa nibs on there. One, because it looks pretty, and two, because they're dang tasty. And there you have it, my recipe for spiced espresso affogato with vanilla bean ice cream, whipped cream, and cocoa nibs. And because I really can't wait to dive into this any longer, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a bite. Oh my gosh. Look at all those layers. Mmm. Mmm. That cardamom comes out with the espresso and the crunch from the cocoa nibs. This little dessert is jam packed with deliciousness. Thanks for watching Wilderness to Table. Come back next time for more wild recipes.